Welcome back to Vegan Sing. Tomato, tomato, or tomato. Today's episode's all about tomatoes because we're making tikka masala and that's the star of the dish. But is tikka masala Indian or British? Well, let's find out. Ayo chaliye. Tikka masala is a dish that has the perfect combination of sweet and savory and it's so indulgent. It's a very simple recipe. It primarily has tomatoes, onion, garlic, and ginger. Primarily aromatic, flavorful masalas with a hint of spice. So if you're someone that loves Indian food but can't handle the spice, this is a perfect mild dish for you. You wanna start off with low heat. We're gonna cook this slowly, and we're gonna start off with some oil. Just a little bit, any vegetable oil that you prefer. Okay, not a little bit, a lot of oil. So I have a mix of two small onions, a half a gram of ginger, and one clove of garlic. And let's go ahead and start off with this mix and add it to the oil. For the cutting portion of the onion, ginger, and garlic, I just did some rough cuts. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's gonna go in the grinder anyway. Now we wanna caramelize the onions and to help speed up that process, we're gonna add some salt. Some people don't even add onions or ginger or garlic. The reason I add the onions is it gives a sweetness to the dish and it's also a flavor absorber. So when we're gonna go ahead and add all the different spices, the onions will absorb all that flavor and make this dish so amazing. We have turmeric, coriander powder, and we have some daigi mix, just a hint. So it's not a spicy dish, it's very mild. Trust me. So I'll just put a little bit more oil to fry the spices. And let's add it in. Cook this until it's golden brown and nicely caramelized. Oof, I love that sizzle. So why is there a debate if tikka masala is Indian or British? Well, the fact is that tikka masala is not a staple food in India. It's actually restaurant food in the villages or even at home, even for me growing up in, in America, we weren't having tikka masala every day. It would be a treat either if we went to a restaurant or we'd make it once in a while at home. And the reason being is Punjabi food historically or in the villages, even today, they don't use cream to make something creamy. Usually our dishes become creamy through our technique of slow cooking, and we have something called malai. So malai is this sweet, creamy texture in our food through slow cooking. So with our dolls, with tomatoes, you'll see more of that through slow cooking. With tikka masala, we take some shortcuts and we get the sweetness from sugar. We get this creaminess from adding some type of cream as well. In this case, we'll be using vegan cream. So it's just not a common practice in Punjab. It was something that was introduced by the British uh, in regards to the style of adding cream to our food. Actually, what's funny is there's really no name for tomato in Punjabi or Hindi. They call it tamatar as a mispronunciation of the word tomato. Some people actually call it foreign eggplant. They call it bagani bengan, which is really interesting. So the addition of tomatoes to our cuisine is something that just happened the past 100, 200 years. Now I have four tomatoes. Now let's just go ahead and add that in. Go ahead and crush the tomatoes. Hulk smash. Hulk smash. Okay, okay, that was a weak Hulk smash. Just try your best. So I'm just gonna add one cup of water to help cook the tomatoes a little bit quicker. Two tablespoons of sugar that I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle in. This will help drive some of that sweetness, right? I talked about how it's sweet and savory, a perfect balance of it. The tomatoes are nicely integrated into the curry. And now what we'll go ahead and do is just grind this up. Look at that color. This is gonna be more of an orange color, by the way. We're not putting saffron or food coloring, which is where you see the historical red color. It's just gonna be a nice orange, beautiful color. 
Ooh, that's hot. You just need a power blender. Now that it's nicely liquefied, this gets messy. Ooh, just gonna strain it into a bowl. I wanna mix it through the strainer. The tomato skin, the onion skin, it'll all stay on the strainer. Keep mixing it until you got all of it. And you're left with this beautiful orange gravy. Now before we add the gravy back into the pot, we're gonna add about four teaspoons of Kashmiri red chili powder. This is more of a mild spice. It's not like Deggy Mirch, which has more of a kick. This is gonna help give the curry a little bit more flavor and some nice red color. So we're gonna add some oil and throw in some Kashmiri red chili. Woo! Just mix it in. Woo! Let's add our gravy. Isn't that beautiful? So is this a British dish or an Indian dish? It's a fusion. It's British Indian or Indian British. You just want to cook this for about three to five minutes and then we'll go ahead and add our cream substitute, coconut milk. Now you want to be careful in regards to which brand of coconut milk you use. Not all coconut milks are vegan. The reason being is some coconuts that are imported into this country are from uh, exploiting certain animals. I'll just get to the story. It's exploiting monkeys. They have monkey slavery in certain countries where they're picking coconuts all day. So there's some uh, animal cruelty associated with it. So you just wanna do some due diligence in regards to which brand of coconut milk you wanna utilize in this dish. It's up to your discretion. If uh, you're more plant-based, it may not matter to you. But for vegans, that's just a tip. You don't get such a nutty flavor from the coconut when we add the coconut milk because we're using such aromatic flavors, it offsets the taste of the coconut. So what we're gonna add is more coriander powder, just to solidify that taste. It's, like I said, you could put as much as you want because it's just so amazing. I also have some garam masala. So garam masala is a variety of different spices and they're all very mild spices, not very spicy at all. And I'm gonna add about two teaspoons of this. Let's make it three teaspoons. I'm feeling a little excited today, so we'll add three teaspoons. I have about one and a half tablespoons worth of kasuri methi, as you can see how it looks. And what this really does is it's a total flavor enhancer. It's gonna change the color a little bit of the dish. It's gonna make it a little bit more green, but the flavor totally offsets the aesthetic issue. So when you add kasuri methi, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take some, you're gonna crush it in like this. You see that? Oof. And then just mix it in. It's like nothing you've smelled before. And then someone was telling me, one of my homies, they were like, why don't you just use real cream? And this was my response to them. So here's the coconut cream. I have about one and a half cups worth. We'll just add in. Woo! I cook it until I get that very thick texture that I'm looking for because I want a very creamy tikka masala. Let's pour some in. So excited. Got to garnish it off a bit. I got some cilantro here. Bam. No, that's not this cooking show. Bon appetito. That just punches you in the face with flavor. It has that slice kick of spiciness, which is so perfect and tastes amazing. And then it has the sweetness from the tomatoes and the sugar and the cream. And it gets complimented by those aromatic spices. 
the coriander powder. Oof. So good. Oof. You guys can have this with rice or garlic naan as well. If you want to eat it with garlic naan, I have a video recipe for that. Vegan Singh's special garlic naan. I'll add that to the description below. I like to just have the gravy and just dip it with garlic naan because it just tastes amazing, nice and simple. So just a teaser for next week, we're going to be making nachos. Wait, what are nachos? It's Indian nachos. Get excited. So I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for watching today. Have a great day.